Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. I'm Chamberlain Oso. I'm Ayo Makine. Good morning and welcome to the show. And from Abuja, good morning. I'm Maupe Ogu Yusuf. Well, yesterday, a lot of people saw the uh, question in the probe of the panel, the House Committee on NDDC asking questions of uh, officials of NDDC, one of which is the acting MD. Uh, uh, Professor Ponde, who unfortunately, uh, some medical situation, so he had to be evacuated. But uh, eventually, we got word that uh, I think he's in stable condition now. But that did raise a lot of concern for several other people. So we decided to find out um, what could have transpired. So, yes, it, it was while that went on uh, after uh, his the episode, then. He had to be taken out. I mean, clearly, they had to uh, allow him to go get some medical attention. But eventually, the, the, the house went on, um, uh, they called for a 30 minute recess so they can regroup, uh, allow things settle in a little further before eventually coming back, which they did and concluded uh, that particular hearing. So, um, that certainly is not, uh, I mean, Normally, you'd think that no, it's not what anyone will wish upon himself. Mm. But just to give us an understanding of what could have played out, because these kind of things you don't see them coming, as it was. So, um, uh, Dr. Charles Suguani, who is a chief consultant neurosurgeon at the National Hospital in Abuja, will be joining us just to give us um, his medical view of what could have transpired at that point. Good morning, Dr. Charles. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, I haven't seen that. I'm sure you might have also seen it as well. What could have happened? What kind of medical situation is that? Yeah, the, um, Chamberlain, good morning. Um, uh, and uh, good morning to the other members of the team there. Um, well, we can look at this uh, from the uh, medical perspective, although there are some other theories to it. But let's stick with medicals. Um, what could have happened is that uh, already we know from his background history that uh, he's been ill for about two weeks, so he wasn't in the best uh, state of health, I mean, issue. And then um, <clears throat> um, we do not know the details of his medical background, but maybe he is hypertensive or he has he's diabetic, he has some other underlying medical condition. But we do know that uh, when we are subjected to stressful condition, uh, the gentleman professor we saw yesterday was uh, in a lot of stress. Uh, it was in a lot of stress um, caused by uh, his demonstration of increasing difficulty, providing answers to the questions that were being posed to him by the members of the investigative team from the National Assembly. And uh, the evidence for stress was that um, uh, he, he was, uh, we found him to uh, to be sweating uh, um, profusely, and I suppose that should be a cold environment. And um, uh, immediately after he started sweating, we saw him holding his head, which means he was either dizzy or he was having some, some sort of increasing headache. And the next thing that happened was that uh, he, he switched off, he passed out, and he was almost convulsing. Now, let's go to the possible explanation for that. Under stressful condition, the human system is known to provide, produce an overdrive of uh, uh, um, sympathetic overactivity. The sympathetic arm of the autonomic nervous system overreacts and they produce, they pour out a lot of catecholamines, uh, mostly um, adrenaline. What, do, what adrenaline does to the system is that it increases heart rate. So his heart must have been pounding. And for someone who uh, has an underlying medical condition, um, it is possible uh, that his heart may have even gone into some sort of uh, uh, arrhythmias, which is, uh, which is uh, the first stage towards uh, a, a, a frank heart attack. And um, if the heart is not working very well, that means it's not pumping blood uh, adequately to the, to the brain. And uh, if the brain is one organ, that is uh, absolutely dependent on a good supply of uh, blood, oxygen, glucose. And um, when, um, when that happens, 
um, the the uh, brain activity, we, we slowed down. And that was when we saw him uh, passing out. And now, uh, for a brain that is insulted in that way, uh, the next thing is that it will, var it will overreact. And uh, that could uh, predispose him to, to um, seizures. So uh, in summary, two events possibly happened to this gentleman yesterday. One, um, his heart was in trouble, definitely. And then um, uh, the brain became involved, secondarily, due to insufficient flow of blood to his brain. Doctor, um, uh, so is it, just, just one moment, uh, if you could just add this to the conversation. Uh, many would uh, wonder how that you know, could have been, because he'd been answering questions smoothly for more than an hour before then, and then just about you know, the time he was supposed to answer just a particular question, just as you also indicated earlier, then he began to be, you know, hold his head and faint and all of that. Uh, is this something that could happen suddenly, or is something that, he'd been, that had been building up, uh, which uh, he was trying to control? Yeah, absolutely. The body has an intrinsic mechanism to cushion stress. Um, but when you push the, the body to the limits, like, uh, I mean, this guy was extremely lucky yesterday. Um, but for the fact that uh, he was able to uh, support himself because he was in a sitting position, we saw him leaning forward, he would have gone flat on the ground. Uh, he's an extremely lucky chap. Um, so it, it's an event that is more of a cumulative event. But you know, the, the there are those who thought that, so could, could he, have, he couldn't have been malingering, could he? No, 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 no. Um, to my mind, people might have different views, but mm -hmm. this chap was in a lot of trouble yesterday. In fact, he was extremely lucky. He could have suffered an irreversible cardiac event. And if you permit me, um, I, I, would, uh, I, would, I would like to talk briefly on the immediate response this chap received yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the immediate help he got was, uh, to my mind, abysmal. Um, we saw a gentleman uh, trying to hold him upright, uh, rather than allowing him to go flat on the ground, and then uh, trying to force his mouth open. In fact, even putting his mouth, putting his hands into, the, into his mouth. We also saw another gentleman, I don't know what he was trying to do, trying to do mouth-to-mouth -to -mouth, uh, resuscitation. In this era of COVID, how could someone do such? Now, it also brings to the fore the, the, uh, the, the situation of our emergency response team in a, in a huge institution like the National Assembly. I've what done. we expected was that, yeah, what, what, what we would have expected is that an emergency medical response team could have swung into action immediately to help this gentleman. Uh, until he left that chambers, uh, we didn't see any of such, although we heard later that he was taking to the uh, to the to the medical unit in the National Assembly, and uh, and then uh, presently we also understand that he's stable, so he's an extremely lucky chap. Okay, so in, in the absence of the medical response team, the gentleman who tried to help him, what should they have done? Well, well, what he should have done is to allow that gentleman to go flat on the ground because uh, that will help uh, blood flow to the brain. Uh, the brain, the, the heart is already in trouble. Uh, so, um, I mean, rather than working against gravity, so it will be easy for the heart to push blood to the brain if it's in the line position. And that is also a position that should be adopted in case he arrests subsequently. Then it is easy to start uh, to commence uh, a CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, in line with established protocols. But then these are not procedures to be conducted by untrained people. No, it's absolutely unacceptable. We expected that the medical, emergency medical response team detailed to the National Assembly will swing into action. Yeah, because this is a, a public place that people do gather all the time. We expected to see... Uh, all right, Dr. Charles. ...defibrillators and equipment. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we do appreciate your uh, professional uh, submissions uh, this morning. Thank you very much indeed for that. So that's Dr. Charles. Uruguay.